Hello and welcome to this virtual introduction to our brand new online career counseling program here at North Carolina Central University. My name is Dr. Chadwick Royal. I am the coordinator of the career education program. I'm going to spend some time going over some of these slides uh, introducing you to the program. A little bit of history about the university. We were initially founded in 1909 by James E. Shepard. It was the first public liberal arts institution for African Americans in the United States. The university is now an institution that offers bachelor's and master's degrees, a law degree, and a doctorate in integrated biosciences. It is considered one of the 16 public institutions of higher education within the University of North Carolina system. We are located in Durham, North Carolina, which is considered the Triangle Region. About the Counselor Education Program, we were initially started in 1952. It is a program within the Department of Allied Professions, which is a department in the School of Education at North Carolina Central University. There are three KCREP accredited programs within the Counselor Education Program. We have, uh, obviously, the Career Counseling Program, which is a 48-hour program. We have a Clinical Mental Health Counseling Program, which is 60 hours. These are semester hours. And we also have a School Counseling Program, which is a 51-hour program. The Career Counseling Program well, the on-campus version of the program is one of only 10 KCREP accredited programs in the United States. We did receive our initial accreditation in 2006. The online version of the program, this is the thing that is new, it is the only, the one and only KCREP accredited online career counseling program. We received this accreditation in July of 2014 and we did receive the initial full eight-year accreditation. Well, it's the maximum amount of years that you can receive when you apply for uh, accreditation. Uh, and this is a peer review process to receive the accreditation. Someone external from our program, uh, several people, uh, came and reviewed our program. We are also an ERCEP approved program. This ERCEP stands for the International Registry of Counselor Education Programs. Now the university is accredited by SACS, which is the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools, and the School of Education in particular is also accredited by NCATE, which is now also now known as CAPE, uh, and that particular element is more important for our school counseling program. You might ask, well, what, what difference would going to a KCREP program make? Uh, and from KCREP's website, uh, this type of accreditation provides recognition that the content and quality of the program has been evaluated and meets standards that are set by the profession. The student, as a consumer, can be assured that appropriate knowledge and skill areas are included in the program and that the program is stable, both professionally and financially. There is a video uh, on KCREP's website, kcrep.org. Uh, it's a student-produced video, which is, gives you a brief summary from a student's perspective about why KCREP is important. And I would encourage you, if you would like, to view that video as well. In summary, though, what KCREP means, uh, it ensures the quality of our program to you if you decide to study with us. It provides a high degree of legitimacy of your degree. There are lots of counseling programs that do not have accreditation, KCREP accreditation. They might claim other types of accreditation, but KCREP is really what matters when it comes to the counseling profession. Graduates of our program are able to take the National Counselor Exam, the NCE, the semester in which they graduate. Even before they graduate, about a month prior to graduating, they are able to sit for that exam. If you don't go to a KCREP program, you can't do that. And the accreditation overall can have implications on national certification or even state licensure in the United States. 
What does a counselor do? Uh, overarching definition of the profession is that counselors uh, exhibit a professional relationship that helps to empower diverse individuals, families, groups to accomplish mental health, wellness, education, and also career goals. This is from the American Counseling Association's 2020 consensus definition. What does a career counselor do? Well, this definition is from a website of the National Career Development Association. Career counselors, those professionals attaining at least a master's degree in counseling or a related degree, and who hold state or national licenses or credentials, they advise, they coach, they counsel individuals to develop and put into action decisions and plans related to lifestyles and career paths. Strategies, techniques, and assessments used by career counselors are tailored to the specific needs and cultural diversity considerations of the individual seeking assistance. Fairly Maybe what might be a little more relevant is to understand where our graduates have typically been employed. And here is a list as you look at the list, please keep in mind that our program has historically been an on-campus offering that only students who attend classes on campus can receive degrees. I imagine this list will change as our program evolves into an online program. But as it in its current iteration, our graduates have worked at our own campus career services center. They've also been employed at all of the local institutions, UNC Chapel Hill, Duke University, Elon University, Wake Forest University, Peace University. We've had a graduate who has moved uh, to the northern part of the country and they've been employed at NYU's Career Center. We've had plenty of people who have uh, obtained jobs through the State Vocational Rehabilitation uh, Agency. We've had people go into private practice. We've had people in corporate settings, and you see a list of just some of the organizations in which they have been employed. And we've also had plenty of graduates who have been employed in various community colleges, Durham County, Wake County, Vance Granville, and also in the Charlotte area. How long will it take to finish your degree? Well, roughly two years, assuming that you go uh, full-time. It is a 48 semester hour program. We are intending on applying a cohort model, which means that each group of applicants will move through the program together. I'll take the same classes at the same time. And here's what it will look like. Uh, I do want to point out that this will assume a fall admission. Uh, as this program is getting started, we will be admitting students for the spring semester of 2015, which is January of 2015, and it will be the only time that we admit students for a spring semester. After that spring of 2015, we will only admit students one time per year for a fall admission, so we will admit students for the spring of 2015 and in the fall of 2015 and every fall thereafter. Uh, so. The typical plan of study, uh, your first year in the fall semester, which uh, fall semesters run August to December, late August to uh, early December, you would take four classes, and you see these listed here. The two that are italicized would be two that uh, students who will be admitted for the spring, that, uh, that one and only spring admission, those would be the two classes they would be able to take in that spring, which will therefore lighten their load uh, in their first year of study. So these are the four classes, CON 5201, 5310, 5320, 5331. All those are taken in that first fall. Next semester, the spring semester, which runs from January to May, early January to early May, they would take CON 5360, 5351, uh, 5910 EDGR 5910 which is a statistics class and also an elective so for those that were admitted in the spring of 2015 
Uh, and you saw in the previous semester that they were able to take two of those classes early. Uh, you might want to move one of the classes from the spring into that fall semester uh, so that you would, again, have a lighter load than the typical career counseling student in that first entire year. You'll notice here, I kind of skipped over with that previous slide, but you'll notice here there is a residency involved with CON 5351. There was also a residency with 5201 in the fall, and I'm going to go into a little more detail about what this residency means in a later slide. You will take classes in the summer between years one and two, uh, and summer school usually occurs through late May through early August. There will be two classes we will want you to take, CON 5371, which is a pre-practicum class. It is a dual session offering, meaning it runs the entire summer, 10 weeks, um, and it also has a residency. The second class you would take would only be taken during the second summer session, which would be roughly the month of July, uh, July, early August. It's only five weeks long, and that is your advanced career counseling class. Year two, your second year in the program, fall semester, we would have you take three classes, CON 5372, 5361, and EDGR 5920, which is an educational research class. In the spring semester of your second year, this is your final semester in the program, you'll take two classes, but a total of nine hours. One is a consultation class. The other is your internship. And this is a six-hour placement. It's a 600-hour field placement. The practicum, which was taken in the fall of year two, is a 100-hour field placement. The residency modules, there are three of them. Each module will last approximately five days, requires you to come to campus um, for intensive interaction with the program faculty and their cohort. You would need to come to Durham, and uh, each module will be specifically linked to the program courses that were mentioned in the previous slides. Uh, housing, meals, all your travel expenses, transportation, those will be the responsibility of the student. Module 1, which takes place one week at the beginning of your very first semester in year 1, that fall of year 1, which is linked to CON 5201, Ethical and Professional Orientation to Counseling. This will happen in late August or early September. Module 2, which will be one week in the middle to the end of your second semester of year 1 in the spring. This will be linked to CON 5351. This is the group counseling class. So this will happen around late March, early April. Your third module, which will be one week near the middle to the end of the summer between years 1 and 2. This is linked to... Uh, the pre-practicum class, which is a skills class, but it's primarily a classroom-based skills, uh, series of skills activities. Uh, and this will take place um, July uh, and August. Some people may wonder, well, how much contact will I actually have with program faculty? If this is an online program, how much interaction will I be able to have? And I'm going to answer this in a couple of ways. One is with respect to your coursework. And there will be some differences of your faculty interaction based on whoever is teaching the particular class. But most introductory courses in your first year, they will likely be asynchronous courses. And this means that everyone in the class will not need to be online at the same time in order to take the class. In the latter courses, your field placement uh, classes, your practicum, your internship, you will have regular weekly contact through video conferencing with that instructor or faculty member. Uh, and this is considered your field placement supervision. In terms of advising with uh, your contact with faculty, upon admission you'll be assigned an advisor and you will set up an initial video conference meeting with that person 
and you use either Skype or FaceTime, and you'll meet with your advisor a minimum of one time per semester using video conferencing. You can meet with them really more, and it probably would be preferred that you meet with them more, but at the minimum, you'll meet with them to talk about your plan of study, to make sure that you're registered and, and that type of thing. And for the residency modules, uh, you'll come to campus for one week to participate in a variety of activities. And this is that first residency module. Uh, and you will be allowed time to be oriented to the program. This theoretically is your kind of your first entry into classes and the program. Uh, and you'll have time to meet in person with that advisor. Uh, for those people that we admit that spring, that one and only spring admission, you will have a little bit of a delayed module. You will have that module in that fall just as it's written. So uh, that orientation may be a little delayed, but of course you'll still be connected with your advisor immediately to help with, with orientation. During the second residency module, You'll meet face-to-face -face with your advisor and discuss your progress through the program and really begin discussions about where you might like to complete a clinical placement. Now, near the end of the third and your final residency module, you'll complete what's called a mid-program review. and This is done before a panel of, of program faculty members. And this review allows the faculty to take a look at all of your curricular assessment elements that you've completed. You're able to talk about the thoughts, your intentions, and your plans for your placement location. And this conversation begins in the review between the student and the faculty panel, but it certainly continues in one-on-one -on -one conversation with your advisor. The types of technology that you will need. You will need high-speed internet connection. This will be required uh, particularly for the video conference meetings that you will hold with your advisor and also uh, within supervision. It will also help with various videos and other coursework elements. You'll need a computer, whether it be a desktop or laptop computer, uh, and you will need a web camera or microphone uh, that you can add to that device. We are highly recommending that you have an iPad. It's possible that we will require this element, and a mini iPad would be sufficient. Uh, this, an iPad contains a web camera and microphone built in. Uh, and so if you get the iPad uh, as it's recommended, then you wouldn't need that web camera or microphone for your computer if you don't already have that. But if, obviously, if we require the iPad, you'll have everything you need. Uh, it's also required that you have headphones and earbuds. This allows for kind of streamlining the uh, web conferencing that takes place. It reduces feedback. Uh, but it also, with the latter elements of your clinical placement and supervision, it will allow for uh, security of communication. You'll also need uh, software. Uh, Skype and FaceTime will be the two primary methods of communication. If we end up requiring iPads, then FaceTime will most likely be our exclusive method of communication. How much will it cost? Well, the rates that I'm going to review here, uh, rates charged per student credit hour, SCH, is that uh, abbreviation there, uh, I'm going to give you figures uh, that are set by the university. I'm giving you the website here where you can see more up-to-date information if this data should change uh, upon the initial publication of this video. Uh, you can get more up-to-date data. But I'm going to give you information related to North Carolina residents and also non-North Carolina residents. This is kind of detailed information, so I encourage you to kind of bear with me here. There will be some a uh, little simpler figures uh, in the latter slide here. But the rates most recently approved at the time of this video, average number of uh, student credit hours per semester for 
uh, for both North Carolina residents and non-North Carolina residents, you'll have 12 hours per semester, uh, assuming you know a fall admission. Now, during this time, a North Carolina resident would pay approximately two thousand seven hundred and fifty-one dollars and eight cents for one semester of study. So, for twelve hours, that's the rate for North Carolina residents. The rate for non-North Carolina residents for twelve hours, nine thousand six hundred and three dollars forty-four cents. In the fall and spring semesters of the first year, that means you'll be taking a total of twenty-four hours. So, North Carolina residents. For that entire first year, you're essentially doubling those rates in the first bulleted point. So, uh, total for the first year for North Carolina residents, $5,502.16. Non-North Carolina residents, $19,206.88. Uh, in the second year of study, six hours are taken over the summer. Nine hours are taken both in the fall and spring semesters. So uh, over the course of the summer and the fall and spring of that second year, you take 24 hours. Now, a North Carolina resident would pay approximately $975.08 for the summer and $2,113.58 per semester in the fall and spring semesters. The non-North Carolina residents would pay $4,051.40 for the summer and then $7,252.85 per semester for the fall and spring semesters. So the totals for the second year, which include the summer, fall, and spring, North Carolina residents would pay $5,202.24. Non-North Carolina residents would pay $18,000. $557.10. So, bringing these totals together for 48 hours, the total program costs, uh, as is written for the plan of study, with a fall admission, a North Carolina resident, year one, you see the totals that's just carried over, year two, the same total that's carried over for a total for the North Carolina resident. $10,704.40. The non-North Carolina residents, again, these totals are carried forward from those previous two slides. Total amount is $37,763.98. Uh, and just, if you'll allow me a point of liberty here, I will um, say, even at the non-North Carolina resident cost, I think it's still... A relative bargain here based on what some of um, your uh, mainstream online private institutions are charging. Uh, without naming names of some institutions, you could end up paying uh, about the same amount for one year of study that you would pay for uh, two years of study at NCCU. To give you some data, it's kind of a cost-benefit analysis here. Uh, I've pulled some statistics from uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which is from the U.S. Department of Labor here. Uh, these statistics are from a resource called ONET, which is their publication. It's uh, fairly user-friendly, but this, this particular data is from a category uh, that's titled Educational Guidance School and Vocational Counselors. So this is where career counseling falls uh, with respect to the way they organize their data. Median wages in, in the year 2013, uh, career counselors and all the educational guidance school and vocational counselors lumped together were making $25.77 per hour, which comes to an annual salary of $53,600. The projected growth over the next 10 years from 2012 to 2022, uh, between 8 to 14 percent, which is about an average rate of growth, which is good. And the number of projected job openings for that same period of time uh, looks like a fairly high number of positions will be available during that time, 87,000. How to apply. 
application can be accessed from our website, www.nccucounseling.com. Click on the heading, Future Students, which is at the top of the web page, uh, and you'll be able to access information about applying. You will need to submit copies of transcripts, letters of recommendation. I believe it's uh, either two or three letters will be requested. You'll need GRE scores, which will need to be less than five years old, and there'll be a written statement. The online application, which I believe is in a system called Apply Yourself, will walk you through all these elements and prompt you for the necessary elements um, uh, on the application. The deadline for our spring admission, this one-time period where we will admit people in the spring, We'll need to have everything in by October 1st of 2014. Thereafter, the deadline for our admission applications will be March 1st each year. If you have any questions related to what you've heard in this video or, or related to any of the information that you find on our website, please feel free to get in touch with me. Again, my name is Chad Royal. You'll see my name here at the top here coordinator of the Career Counseling Program. My email address, croyal, C-R-O-Y-A-L, at nccu.edu. You can also contact Dr. Peggy Whiting, and you see her contact information there as well. You're also welcome to contact me by telephone. My campus telephone number is area code 919-530- 6465. I also have a virtual office number, so if you don't reach me at my campus telephone, you can call my virtual office number, and that is area code 919-585-5229. We thank you very much for your interest in our program, and we hope to uh, receive your application soon.